What a feeling in the gym tonight, folks. These guys are going at it in the Big East. Hard drive the back. Oh, woo! Break the house down. Take that. Tell you what, Creighton doing a great job shutting down Miles Powell. Trailing, chasing, contesting, nothing easy. It's a good call of basketball game tonight. It is, it's fun. Now that is a highlight for you. Whoa, what a play! Jefferson made that play on his backside. Ziggy to the hole, and good! And that's it, the Blue Jays defeat Seton Hall. Rematch time in Omaha, and Kevin Willard knows this is a winner-take-all game to close out the regular season. Will it be Seton Hall? Will it be Creighton as your Big East regular season champs? Rob Lab, Casey in studio with you, and our college football colleague, Urban Meyer, he loves to throw around the term elite. There is no higher praise for him than being called elite, and one of the reasons Seton Hall has reached this level of success this season, Casey, is because of their elite defense. Absolutely. They are one of the tallest and strongest and toughest teams on the defensive end in all of the country. When you have Romero Gill and Mamu Kilishvili kind of anchoring in the paint lab, uh, it's a recipe um, for success on the defensive end. What you need to keep an eye on, though, is their coverage on defense against Marcus Zagorowski and pick and roll. In the first matchup, they switched a lot, and it got them into big-time trouble. They reached, they fouled, and they gave up threes to Creighton. So keep an eye. Do they continue to stay small or continue to stay big, or do they go small? Yeah, I agree with you. Defense, a key element. And good defense is complemented and set up by good offense. So it's important on the road in a tough environment yes. like this in Omaha, Creighton, that Seton Hall executes. That means don't jack quick shots. Uh, don't turn it over. Play through the paint. Get your bigs touches. Get Roden involved, Gill involved, Mamu involved. Attack off the dribble to get a piece of the paint before launching those rockets. Uh, so interesting that Seton Hall undefeated when they shoot less than 27 threes so and five and eight when they shoot more than 27 threes. What does that mean? Don't rely on the three ball. Play through the paint, and that's the magic number. Uh, be selective with your three-pointers in terms of the quality do, of your shot. Do you think Seton Hall is aware of these numbers, that they need to kind of be a little more judicious with their three-point launch launches? I think so, right. um, but at times you can't tell, and obviously that's the challenge to work <laughs> with 18 and 20 year olds trying sure. to herd cats. And well, how they're going to deal with emotion. We saw how difficult it was for the seniors at Seton Hall midweek. They lost to Villanova. They don't have that home court pressure, but they do have number one on the line. We'll see it half for the call. Kevin Enjoy Cooper it. And Donnie Marshall. <laughs> Guys, the electricity in Omaha could power several small cities in this building as the Seton Hall Pirates and the Creighton Blue Jays are ready to go to work with a Big East title on the line. Tens of thousands of Blue Jay fans in this building, but a new Blue Jay fan club has just opened in Philadelphia because Villanova's win earlier today gives the Wildcats a shot at a crown. However, for Seton Hall, it's a very simple formula. Win this game. You're the outright regular season champs, first time since 1993, and the top seed in the Big East Tournament. For Creighton, with a win, their first conference championship since the 2013 Missouri Valley Conference crown, and the Blue Jays become the top seed in the Big East Tournament. What an atmosphere, and what a day. Alongside Donnie Marshall, I'm Kevin Kugler. You've walked up this floor a couple of times with a Big East title on the line. What are these guys feeling right now? You know, you're trying to convince yourself it's just another game. It's we're just playing basketball, put the ball in the hoop. We, put, we do more than them, we win. But inside, emotionally, mentally, you know that this is a game for, for these players. You will remember this game for a long, long time. You want to finish it the right way. Well, you're going to remember if you were in the Jeep Grand Cherokee starting lineup for this game. And, of course, your eyes always go to the backcourt when you're looking at both of these teams, Miles Powell and the three-guard backcourt of Creighton that leads the way scoring. Yeah, but but I will say that Sandro Mamukelishvili is so important. If Creighton decides to go the route of small ball, that guy right there has to stay out of foul trouble and be the big for Seton Hall. We will see, though, will one team try to play bigger? Or will, the, will one team try to play small? This is this is not just a checkers match, which is about my level. Of <laughs> this is a chess match. I mean, that's what this game will be for these coaches and these players. Cannot tell you how excited I am to be here with you in this building today. What a spot to be. What a college basketball atmosphere. And here we go. 
Quincy McKnight will bring it up. He's been a Blue Jay killer in his career. 17 points per game in his career against the Jays. He really knows how to handle the ship for Kevin Willard, especially early on. Has done a great job since transferring from Sacred Heart University of getting guys in their spots. And a turnover forced early by the Blue Jay defense. Here comes Tyshawn Alexander. And that's the way you want to start. When you're at home, you get this crowd into it with an easy basket. You don't have to rely on long jump shots to start your offense with your defense. is huge for Creighton. And Alexander's offense usually gets the headlines, but it's his defense oh. that has rounded him into a complete play. He's become such a great player on both ends of the floor, but more importantly on the defensive end. And a foul on the floor. Christian Bishop with his first. He got into foul trouble in the first meeting. This is just great job. Hands, deflections are so important. I know coaches keep that stat. It should be an official stat, Coops, because deflections, not only do they disrupt and, and change the landscape of where that shot clock is, but they can lead to easy layups like we saw there. It was one thing that Rick Pitino charted throughout his career as a college and an NBA yeah. coach was the deflection statistic. For Seton Hall, this guy is going to have to get himself going easy early. McKnight got an open look from three, and that pinballs off to Bishop. And it's a good shot. You know what's going to happen is the defense is going to drag and, and Miles Paul is going to pull them. Other guys have to be ready to step up and shoot. That's a good shot for Quincy McKnight. Just couldn't get it to go down. And like we said, he's not afraid to shoot against the Jays. He's had great success against Creighton in his career. I like this look. A little bit of a zone. Zoned up. Nagorowski at the foul line got a good look in that zone. And that's the weak spot. The, the, that foul line area, I would say the Big East logo or along the baseline if, if that defense is extended a little bit in that zone that back line that's a great shot though You're not going to get a lot of those against his own miles powell coming around the screen here's mcknight alone in the corner and this time able to hit two really good looks early for quincy mcknight and decision making so important for miles powell as well not just when he decides to shoot but when he decides to see the defense comes running at him to find and have confidence in a teammate Jefferson penetrating off the dish from Bishop, and he'll work his way to the line. And just take a look. You're going to see three white uniforms right here. One, two, three, that step up on Miles Powell. And then the kick to the corner. And Quincy McKnight hitting that three as Jefferson works his way to the line. Just a 66% foul shooter, Damian Jefferson, but his climb throughout the course of conference play is one of the reasons why the Blue Jays are in the position right now to win a share of the Big East Championship, averaging almost 11 points per game in Big East play, but he misses two at the line and a violation. So another chance for Jefferson. Those are tough, too, because in a game like this, every single possession, missed opportunity, obviously, from the foul line, but then the violation for Seton Hall just can't happen. Sandro getting that hand in there. Big man toppled over a little bit. Jefferson, second chance. Still can't connect, he missed three. Listen, it's hard to make three in a row for some guys. It's almost impossible to miss three in a row. <laughs> Making three, eh, missing? Eh, that's just unheard of. There's Miles Powell. And Miles Kale, 13 on the shot clock for the Pirates. A handoff to Powell, driving inside, pinned by Tyshawn Alexander. The push ahead to Jefferson. Jefferson, oh my goodness! The early hammer for Damian Jefferson. Well, I think that surprised everyone in the building, even the Creighton fans. Mamou Kelisvili especially. If you're going to go up with authority, <laughs> I mean, you have to go up with authority on the block, or... <laughs> That happens. Kale not going to hit that one, and Gill with a foul inside. Romaro Gill's first, then it'll go back to the Jays. Yeah, and we've talked about their offense all season long, but what about Tyshawn Alexander and the job he's done defensively all season? And then here, Kalish really has to go in with a vengeance like Jefferson does. Wow. That's how you finish. That's how you get about 17,000 people in this building on their feet. I mean, this has been the loudest four points I can remember. <laughs> if you didn't know better, you, you think it was a 10-point game already. Great enough. 
Zagorowski got to the baseline and hits his first two. And that's the beauty of this building, though, and these fans. He talked about it a little bit with Greg McDermott before the game. He said this, the community is what he calls them. They just they love their team even when they're not playing well. And it means so much to you as a player to be able to raise the level when you have your fans behind you. Miles Powell to work this time against Jefferson. Powell with the fake. The three for Miles Powell is good. And Miles Powell on the road, very different than Miles Powell at home. 27 points per game away from home against Big East competition. I just love his composure. You know, shot clock running down, little shot fake. You get past a guy that's so hard defensively to stay down on him because he will release it from anywhere. There's Mamu against Jefferson. And Mamu doing what he's done really over the last three weeks, and that's find his shot, averaging almost 19 points per game over the last four. Slow grind, deft touch down there. <laughs> Missed so much time with that broken right wrist. Kevin Willard said he had a vacation of seven weeks. And it, it let guys who didn't play a lot and get a lot of shots, it gave them an opportunity to step in. It gives you a chance as a coach to see who you can rely on and how long guys can go. Powell gets it back. The extra pass to Mamu and the three falls. Wow. And Seton Hall by five. I mean, that started by walking the ball. It was almost a 10-second violation. The time that they were taking to get that thing up, which was by design. And that's just patience. Tough shot there. Falling away by Damian Jefferson to cut it to three. And here we go again. This is a Seton Hall team. This to me is just taking a little air out of the building. You know, they, they understand if you can diffuse it, keep the crowd out of it, you control the tempo, even if that tempo is a slower tempo than you really want. And you know Creighton wants to get into a track meet. Seton Hall seems bound and determined not to let that happen. Wild shot that time by Powell. And here comes Zagorowski and a foul whistled on Miles Powell on the way up the floor, his first. And that'll take us to our first media timeout. Oh yeah, this is just a great use of the shot fake. Really, it was an eyebrow fake, but you get that when you're Miles Powell and then Mamu Kelishvili, Sandro down low, Seton Hall up a couple here early in Omaha. Fox College Hoops is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Now the great Blue Jays trying to get back into the championship winning business. The last time they won a conference title was in their final season in the Missouri Valley. In this building, Doug McDermott, 41 points a season high. Blue Jays won 91-79 in the regular season finale against our tribal Wichita State. They would beat Wichita State again in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament to go to the NCAA Tournament. Beat Cincinnati in the opening round and then ran into Duke in their next game and Duke knocked out that Creighton team and they have not won a title shared or otherwise since they joined the Big East that next season so history with a chance to be made today and Miles Powell trying to keep them from that historic mark grab one of his own an outright title and you see his numbers on the road in Big East games this is rare Donnie to yeah. go away from home in this league where you're so well scouted and have those kind of numbers I, you know and I've had conversations with him about that and I would say that's more of a, a professional and NBA kind of mentality where you get on the road you can focus a little bit people aren't asking you for tickets who's coming to the game parents really all over you you get a little bit better focus for some guys when you're on the road. Zagorowski brings the Jays within one. That's a great play out of a timeout. I mean, that, that's when you have to dial it in offensively. You never want to be the guys that when you walk 20 seconds <laughs> from the huddle onto your set and you forget what you're supposed to run. Roden over to Quincy McKnight. Six on the shot clock for McKnight, and that's an illegal screen and a turnover. Mike Obiangu off the bench. Picks up his first as Kevin Willard, Big East co-coach of the year a few years back. You gotta believe these two coaches are the two odds-on favorites for coach of the year in the Big East this year. Greg McDermott, one of ten semifinalists for the Naismith Coach of the Year Award nationally. Jays were picked seventh 
<laughs> in the Big East this season, which is more of an indication of the conference's strength than any weaknesses of great. But you don't think about that when you see it, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> team that's seven, you don't think about it that way. You oh. think about it as we're not getting any respect. Off the turnover, and Quincy McKnight with the easy two to give Seton Hall the three-point lead. And i got to be honest, I don't think that Creighton has gotten the respect they deserve all season long. I know they, they had a couple of you know, tougher losses early in the season and, you know, some wins that weren't blowouts also, but the body of work overall and, and how they've gotten better and what they've done in a great conference, you, you got to, you can't forget about them. And, again, you always want to be in control of your own destiny and, this is how you answer a lot of those critics if you're Creighton. Off the fake, Roden on the drive. Collides That's inside. That's a yeah. foul and one. I agree with that. You, you got to get in there and be set sooner before the offensive player starts to take off. He's taking off now, and he's pretty close. I still, that's a call. And again, I think it's still very subjective. You just don't know. That's a tough call for the officials. I know they tried to make it go away, and they said definitively, but it just it has not gone away, and it is not definitive. <laughs> it haunts the officials. Depending on what color jersey you're wearing, you think yes. that's all one way or the other about 90% of the time. I will say, though, you know, our officials are, they're not good. They're great. They really are. They, you know, great guys. They have a great you know, communication level with the players and the coaches. When I played, you, the refs didn't want to talk to you at all. <laughs> they put their hand up. There was no conversation. Inside, good extra pass to Kelvin Jones, and the big man off the bench who has played well of late for the Blue Jays gets his first two. Jones is going to have a, a lot of opportunities in this game because Romaro Gill is a helper. He wants to come over. Not that he wants to block everything, but he understands he's learned how to come in and, and help when someone gets beaten off the dribble. So that means you got to be able to step up behind him and you'll get easy buckets like that. That said, he likes to block everything. Nation's <laughs> yeah. third in the nation, tops of the Big East to block shots. He doesn't mind blocking everything. He, he will. He doesn't, but, but he's smart with it. Mm. And he set a nice screen there to get Quincy McKnight open. Fast start for McKnight with seven. I love that kid. I, I, I think Quincy McKnight understands his role. And he is the definition of Seton Hall. He defends. He gets guys in their spots. He can understand when Miles Powell goes to the bench. Sometimes he's going to have to score, but for the most part, he's going to have to be that facilitator and make guys better when his stud's on the bench. Five-point lead for the Pirates. Ten on the shot clock. Now McKnight with five to shoot. Going to work. Got his man in the air trying to coax some contact, and it's out of bounds to the Blue Jays. Timeout on the floor, but Quincy McKnight off to a red hot start. No and I can live with those shots only because he knows the shot clock is running down, but this is just a great use of the dribble, keeping it alive. Seton Hall not going anywhere, folks. Big East basketball sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Alongside Donnie Marshall, Kevin Kugler back in Omaha where Seton Hall has a five point lead over the Creighton Blue Jays, 11-28 remaining. In this first half here in Omaha, the final piece of the puzzle as to who's going to win the Big East Championship. Xavier trying to win tonight to keep their streak alive of 37 straight seasons at 500 or better in conference play. Villanova, they win a share of the regular season title with Seton Hall loss here because they beat Georgetown right at the wire. And tonight, a couple of big games still in the Big East. DePaul Providence and that Butler-Xavier matchup. Later on on FS1. That Xavier Butler is must-see TV. <laughs> I can't wait to watch that game. Those teams always, I mean, they have a long history, but they get after it. And you know they will again. <laughs> Off the timeout, Jefferson. Got to shoot that as soon as he catches that foul line. He can't take a dribble into the shot blocker. Shoot the first one. Zagorowski with the three, the first main three for the Blue Jays. I just love how hard Zagorowski plays. I mean, he may not be the most gifted guy on the floor any given game but he's going to play harder than anybody else thinks his way through the game patient yeah, that's tough offensive foul after he lost the ball that's number two on miles powell that's a tough one you almost wish that they would have called the strip foul if you're a seton hall fan you know, I, I I couldn't see through the player, but I thought there was a lot of arm here. No, there was all ball. So now if that gets caught, you're going the other way. That's how you step in and take a charge. 
When Tyshawn Alexander started that with another defensive yeah, play. Strip. You, could, you couldn't see I was blocked. It looked like the arm came back, but that was a clean rip. So it's danger time here for Seton Hall with Miles Powell on the bench with two fouls and still ten and a half to play in this first half. Alexander will try the three. And the rebound ripped down by Kelvin Jones. Backs out. Bala in the corner. And the rebound to Reynolds. They're not going to get very many offensive rebounds won against a bigger Seton Hall team. But those are just, that's a, just a really good look by Ballock in the corner. We were listening into the huddle this last time out with Kevin Willard, and he was telling his team, I know what we're doing isn't natural, walking it up the floor. But it's taken the crowd out of the game, and it's what we have to do right now. Trying to get inside, and a miss by Romaro Gill. Now those have been plays that have not been converted for, for Seton Hall all season, and then it turns into a five-point swing. Zagorowski again. Right place, right time. He seems to be a guy for Creighton that just fixes those issues. If there's a problem, he knows how to fix it for you. Ten points for Zagorowski, prompting a Seton Hall timeout in Omaha. Really important sequence a moment ago, Donnie. Yeah, Miles Powell brings this one over back to the defender. Good rip. That's two fouls on Miles Powell. Someone else has got to step up, and then the, the missed pick and roll alley-oop and Quincy McKnight backing up a little bit too far you gotta understand once Zagorowski's already made one you almost turn him into a driver you gotta know the scouting report a little bit you gotta know that a three will get this crowd and this building into it more than maybe just a layup so McKnight trying to get Seton Hall back on track off the timeout with Creighton up one Roden, that one's right out on top of him. Eight to shoot. McKellis really hands off to Reynolds, and Reynolds is held trying to split the double. And the hold on Damian Jefferson will be his first team's third. That's, the, that's when, if you're Reynolds, you got to go over to the ref and give him a pat on the butt and say thank you because he really had no place to go. And, yeah, maybe there was some contact there. But, wow, that's That's helpful. Knight in the corner. Zegarowski had gotten bumped away from the ball. Gill with the offensive rebound and the hook putback. How about that? You know, Romaro Gill has done a great job of, you know, he's been a second shot player. He's been a feature guy in that pick and roll. But you'd like to see him get involved. You bigs that block so many shots and change so many shots, you've got to give him a touch on the offensive end or at least help them be involved. In the corner, Alexander. And when the threes start to fall for the Jays, they tend to come in bunches. Yeah, and that's just great recognition. Guys know where to get to. They give each other space on this Creighton team. And that was one of the things I asked Coach Mack about a shoot around today. He said, you know, our, our, our three-headed monster, they just, they get it. You know, Tyshawn, Marcus, Mitch, they just, if one guy's got it going, the other two will get out of the way, but they'll still stay engaged. It's hard to do. Two to shoot, one to shoot. Ramukelas really doesn't get the shot off. He wanted a foul on Alexander instead of turnover. Back to Creighton. This is just an awesome job. Keep it, keep an eye on this corner over here. I tell you, it's too early. Game's too early for my telly. <laughs> <laughs> the drive, the kick to the corner, and look, they just replace. That's two on one basketball over there. Uh, that's just understanding of where your teammates are going to be and being comfortable getting out of their way. I was going to criticize your shape ability. I mean, that was not a very good circle there, but I'll blame the, you know, I'll blame the instrument thing. Well, a half. I need a, I need a coffee, and then we'll get an extra one. <laughs> for the telly. Yeah. Zegarowski trying to work against Gill. Still 12 to shoot. And In the corner, the three falls. Zegarowski, three for three from deep. That same corner. Communication has to be better for Seton Hall. 12-2 run for the Blue Jays. I will say Seton Hall has seen it all. They've felt runs all season long, just like I'm sure Creighton has. So on the road, it's important to have some patience, especially with your star on the bench with two fouls. Kale turns the corner, drives right into Bishop's chest, and he's able to get the two. So athletic, 6'5", yeah. 6'6". Six, six, 
That's good D there. Denzel Mahoney after the turnaround. No, and a tip. There's going to be a foul called underneath. And a timeout on the floor. Zegarowski really heating up for the Blue Jays. Oh, gosh, look at this. No one's guarding him. you got to find him. Communication has to be better. Creighton, you're welcome. Fox College Hoops is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Some of the images from the last outright Big East championship for Seton Hall, 92-93. Led by P.J. Carlissimo, Terry DeHare. They were the regular season champs. There are the seniors, DeHare, Jerry Walker, Daryl Crist with the trophy. That team also won the Big East tournament. Like Creighton's last championship team, they lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament to Western Kentucky. The good news for them, and that team will always be remembered, they were 2-0 against Donnie Marshall's UConn teams. Oh, that, that was my sophomore year. That we, it was. We were so happy they were leaving. <laughs> that was not a great year for us. And there were there were eight sophomores on that team. And, and Terry DeHare and Jerry Walker, they took advantage of us. They really, they should feel bad about that. And Terry DeHare, I got to tell you, he was prolific, but a lot like Marcus Zagorowski today, putting the team on his back. They'll make a mistake, he erases it with these threes. And a lot like Terry DeHaro on that Seton Hall team, heats up in a short amount of time, 13 points in 13 minutes. 239 total three-pointers for the trio that you see on your screen. More than 235 Division I teams. And let it fly is the mantra. You see it on the T-shirt of this Creighton program. And they have never really met a bad shot, according to their head coach, Greg McDermott. They'll shoot from wherever, whenever. And if they're playing your twos against their threes, they'll take that every single game. Jefferson off the inbound, settles for the elbow jumper, and it goes out of bounds to Seton Hall. And that, this, what we talked about earlier, the first four-minute timeout or so, they ran their stuff when they came back in. That's not what you want if you're Coach Mack to come in and shoot an air ball, and you're supposed to be running a set out of that timeout. And the speed jog up the floor from Quincy McKnight was as close as Seton Hall's come to a frenetic pace, bringing it up the floor in the second try for an alley-oop. Wow. They cannot get it into the hands of Tyree Samuel, but he does draw the foul on Marcus Zegarowski, and he'll go to the line. First foul on Zegarowski. Yeah, this could be a, a good situation for Tyree Samuel because he's, he's one of the bigger guys on the floor, but he still has the athleticism. I like that they come down and they run a play for him. He can't get it to go. But it just kind of shows you Kevin Willard has one trust in him and that there is some foul issues they got to deal with. Miles Kale, who has two personal fouls, stayed on the floor through that last time out. So Kale with two, Powell with two, those foul issues that Donnie's talking about. No Blue Jay with more than one. Four total fouls whistled against the home team. And a 48% foul shooter can't connect. Zagorowski on a mismatch against Samuel. Trying to take the big man. Here's Mahoney and a strip by Samuel. Nice hands by the youngster. Yeah, look at look at the, the there's just the size <laughs> difference. Mahoney's about three inches shorter than Samuel. That is. And obviously you got a guy, a, an older guy against the young buck, but still the size that Seton Hall has on this team, even when they get into their bench, is impressive. Tend to shoot for the Blue Jays. Here's Balak steps back for a three. Halfway down and it pops back up. In his career, strangely enough, he is two for 22 from three against Seton Hall. This is his sixth game against the Pirates. And we don't want to talk about what he does when he goes to Newark. <laughs> he was 0 for 7 this year from the floor. Did not score in Creighton's win. As that one saved by Tyshawn Alexander. Here's Jefferson. Jays would love to get it running, but Seton Hall's controlled the pace in this first half. Alexander off the spin, and the rebound to Tyree Samuel. And somehow Seton Hall sped up Creighton in the half court. And they slow him down, walking up in the full court. And, then I, I, and I understand, when you're a faster team, you want to try to get those points on the board and hurry up and get the ball back, but that cannot affect the quality of your shots, and I think it's happening a little bit since the last time out for Creighton. McKnight with eight to shoot. 
Seven points in the first half. Here's Mamu contested three with the shot clock winding, and Zegarowski with the rebound. He probably didn't look up, no, he had six seconds left. Ballock feeding inside, and Mahoney able to muscle it through the contact and get it down. First points for that man, Denzel Mahoney, the transfer from Southeast Missouri State. Well, one thing this pace is helping, even though they only have 21 points, Seton Hall, it's, it's only a five-point game, and Miles Powell's been on that bench a long time. I would imagine after our next TV timeout, he'll be back on the floor, and then Kevin Willer telling him, listen, you got to play the right way. And that's an offensive foul on Shavar Reynolds. First on Reynolds, 17th foul on the Pirates. Listen, when you have a reputation of being a terrific defender, you're going to get these calls. Another one that could have gone the other way, but he was in position. He didn't flop. He took the contact, gave up his body. In the eye, he almost forced the official to make that call, and we know what he's done defensively. His reputation has earned that for him. So Reynolds leaves on the bench as Jared Roden returns. Kale still out there with those two fouls. Seton Hall's not scored in almost three minutes, but the Jays only with a five-point lead. Alexander, the alley-oop to Bishop, and Mamu in there to break it up, but he commits the personal foul. Didn't see much of that in the first meeting. Both of those players got into foul trouble, had three fouls each by halftime. You got to know, though, if you're Mamu Kelisvili, that Bishop is not going to step back and shoot a jump shot. His role is second shot player. He's got great activity. And then those pick and rolls for alley oops at the rim. He's undersized. But that means you got to stay home a little bit. You can't overhelp. Kevin Willard was hot about that call. Still arguing as Miles Powell returns to the floor with those two fouls. Three points in eight minutes in this first half. Now, there was a lot of contact on the arm there. I don't think Mamu got up as high as Bishop did, so I think that was the correct call. But uh, Kevin Willard may be using that and, and really fueling something else. You know, a couple of charge calls he wasn't too sure about. Listen, his star has two fouls and really hasn't done much in this game, so you, you got to do something to shake it up if you're a head coach. And you said they needed him back on the floor offensively, if nothing else, as Roden off the feed from Powell hits the three. As soon as he comes in the game, something good happens. Again, he's going to attract so much attention, you overhelp. There are guys that step up for Seton Hall. They've done that. A pass for Bishop, and he traveled with it. It was low, and the big man had to go down and get it. Pick and roll. He is a high flyer. you got to throw it up where only he can get to it, not at his shoelaces. Well, if you told Kevin Willard that you were going to miss most of the first half with Miles Powell. He was only going to have three points at the under four. And you'd be within three on the road. I think he had signed up for that before the game. Powell harassed. Mamu trying to go baseline. Gets to the rim and it rattles around. It won't make a highlight, but it counts as two just the same. Extra pass. Alexander left alone. And Seton Hall with the ball looking for the lead. And it's a wonderful play by... Mamu Kellis really because he could have settled for the three, but that's when you put it on the floor. The defense is scrambling. You rip it through and get to the basket. Powell steps around the screen. That three off. Mamu Kellis really with the rebound. And back out it goes to McKnight. Patience. That's been the name of the game for Seton Hall in this first half. McKnight looking. Working to the rim. No. Roden soaring in for the rebound. Another chance for Seton Hall to take the lead. This is when Roden has to get away. You got to get away from Miles Powell. Let him go to work. <laughs> you know, when you stand there, it gives the defense a chance to basically stand in there and get some help. That was all earned by Miles Powell, though, splitting that D. I mean, when you get back in the game, you got to play the right way when you have a couple of fouls. Just a great read. Says Alexander's off of me. All right, I shook him. <laughs> Let me go to the basket and then Mamu to the rim. You got it, Rob Stone. Thank you very much. And you look at those standings with that Villanova win today. 
if they can get a little help from their friends in Omaha, they'll have a share of a conference championship. Seton Hall would like to stiff arm everybody behind them, win this game, and claim the outright Big East crown, their first since 1993. And Seton Hall's really weathered the storm here early on. They didn't have Miles Powell for a good chunk of the first half with foul trouble. He comes back on the floor. Not coincidentally, Donnie Marshall, they regain the lead over a Creighton team that's trying to get their first title since the Missouri Valley Conference crown of 2013. I, I do have to say, though, that we talk every season, it seems, about Villanova and their dominance and how we've been indoctrinated to Villanova's the champ. I think this is a season that Jay Wright deserves more credit than any of them in the last six. This is, a, you know, he's got a young team. He's got a team that he's been trying to figure out who they are. They've been trying to play in that system. They're, they, they have some young, young, really good talent. And we're still talking about, we're not talking about them as much. So this is a season I believe Villanova needs the most conversation about how well they played and how great a coach Jay Wright is. What a final week they've had. That yeah. young team win at Seton Hall, win at Georgetown. Man, it's easy to win, easier, I should say, to win with old guys. Tomorrow Gill oh. on the baseline. So efficient. Right place, right time. Got to give him some more touches. You know, you just got to keep your bigs happy. He's one of those old guys you can win with, the senior. Tyshawn Alexander blocked off out to Mahoney. That three falls for Denzel Mahoney and the Jays spring back on top. Missy McKnight just can't allow that to happen. You know, you fall asleep for just a split second. And that perimeter will hurt you. And everybody on that perimeter for Creighton knows how to shoot a three. First game between these two teams had 15 ties and 20 lead changes. Already in the first half, two ties and 10 lead changes. In other words, we're getting an encore performance from what was one of the best games of the year. Gill from the elbow, no, and Zegarowski will start it the other way. Not the most comfortable shot for Gill, but Listen, you're wide open. Yeah, obviously, he's worked on it. But you're not going to live with that. <laughs> if you're Creighton, you'll live with it. Not Seton Hall. Alexander hoping he was going to get called, or a foul called against him. The ball goes the other way, and on the run, short to Bishop. That's 120 to go in this first half. That's one you would think with a minute and a half where you pull it out and you try to get a higher percentage shot, unless you're getting to the rim. I think that's one Roden and, and the Pirates would want back. Bishop off the fake. Finds Alexander. And that three won't go. Tyshawn Alexander just two for seven from the floor, Donnie, but he's made his impact felt on the defensive end. Roden lucky there. You don't want to leave to help on a guy like Bishop going to the basket. You got a shot blocker under there. Donald Kelashvili with 15 to shoot. Here's Powell. Bumped by Bishop, who steps out and picks up foul number two. And that's a better handle with the ball because earlier, before the fouls, early in this game, Miles Powell would see that Bishop jumping out or the big jumping out, and he'd try to turn the corner or pick the ball up. You almost have to, even if you're going towards the bench, you almost have to attack the big at his feet. They're going to give you that call when a big jumps out and there's any type of contact that far away from the basket. Kelvin Jones started to sprint off the Jays bench and he got sent right back for Damian Jefferson by the head coach. So Jefferson enters and Christian Bishop with his second foul will leave trying to protect him before the second half begins. 40.7 seconds remaining in this first half. Seton Hall down a pair. Look how small this lineup is for Creighton. And Kevin Willard goes with a small lineup himself. McKnight. Back out to Powell. Miles Powell with eight to shoot against Tyshawn Alexander. Got past Alexander to the rim, and he lays it in. Great offensive set there. You flatten everyone out, so now the help cannot come to double-team the ball. And now Creighton will hold for the final shot of what has been, as expected, an intense and entertaining first half. Tied at 32. Six seconds remaining in the half. Zegarowski. It's Mamu Kelashvili. Lost the dribble. Zegarowski splits. The floater won't go. Halftime is here. And these two teams enter the locker room in a battle for the Big East Championship in a tie game. 20 minutes. That's all it is. We got a 20-minute game. Whoever wins that 20-minute game is going to be the champ. 
in this Big East showdown. Powell, McKnight, Zagorowski, and Alexander. We started talking about the backcourts in the starting lineups, yep. and the backcourts are delivering in this yeah, first half. They have delivered at both ends of the floor. We're set up for a good one in the second half, Luke. I'm going to come back. The end of the yeah. first half with the score. I'll join you. Oh, good. 32-32. <laughs> but right now, we're going to the halftime show in Los Angeles. It's right after these messages in a tie game. Nebraska today in a battle for the Big East regular season championship between Seton Hall and Creighton on Fox. And Seton Hall with a win today in Omaha. They are your outright Big East Conference champions. If the Creighton Blue Jays win, it's a three-way tie atop the standings. Everybody gets a share, but Creighton becomes the number one seed in next week's Big East tournament at Madison Square Garden. Alongside Donnie Marshall, Kevin Kugler, welcome you back inside the CHI Health Center in Omaha, Nebraska. Seton Hall in a tie game really controlled the pace and tempo of that first half. I know a lot of people think, oh, it's boring when you play slow. I think it's smart. We talked about this being a chess match, and, and Kevin Willard had to play that way when Miles Powell got the two fouls because now you're in better control. Now you have to be more efficient because you're not getting as many opportunities. I thought they handled themselves well. To say that the two miles both had foul trouble in the first half, to come back here and be notched up at halftime, I think Kevin Willard will take that any day of the week. One of the things Greg McDermott wants to see is his let it fly mantra for his team. And when they got their offense at their best, this is what they were doing. Yeah, they, they understand spacing one. They have trust in one another. And they have belief that if I give up a, a good shot, my teammate is going to make a great shot. Seton Hall has to close those gaps, that airspace a little bit better defensively. But the glass, to me, is what's keeping Seton Hall right there notched. They're plus five on the boards. As you look at our first half stats, sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee, the percentage for the Jays is right where it normally is when they win basketball games from three. There's a huge disparity for Creighton in their losses. They're shooting about 25% of their wins, 41% from three. And you see Miles Powell. Seton Hall was outscored 17 to six while he was on the bench with that foul trouble. But they weather the storm and come back to a tie game as we start the second half. I will say Miles Powell knows how to play his game in those second halves. He, he just he understands. He's got to be smart, obviously, not to pick up the third foul. But I would guess that he's going to be playing this game a little bit this half a little differently than he started the game. Oh, how about Jefferson inside and then the block by Gill. Jefferson got the offensive board, but Gill made sure he did nothing with it. There's that pace again, walking up the floor. And I think that's what makes them so special, Seton Hall. And a little bit scary is that they can play fast, they can play big, or they can play slow, and they can go small as well. If in about four weeks we gather in Atlanta and one of these two teams is in Atlanta, would it surprise you at all? Not at all. Not at all. Mamu Kelashvili with the three, a little strong with the shot clock whining, but Gill with the offensive rebound. I really believe that Miles Powell has to attack the big at a better angle when they jump out to help. Powell trying to turn the corner against Tyshawn Alexander. Powell steps back after the contact and hits a tough fadeaway too. He's just so tough. Never gives up on himself, his belief and his ability to score the ball from anywhere on the floor. Nine for Powell. Alexander one step beyond the logo, lobbing it inside to Bishop who can't connect at the rim. That's when Bishop wants back. That's what happens. Gill steps up. The miss, you're going to be wide open behind him. And Powell off the screen, a little strong on the three, but he chases down his own. That can't happen if you're Creighton, though. Uh, and, and, and almost everyone in the building assumed it was going in. Even the Creighton players, I think that's why they just kind of stood there and watched it. McKnight slipping as he got into the paint, and that'll be covered up. Is it a travel or is it a tie-up? It's a tie-up, and the possession arrow keeps it on this end of the yeah, field. I think that should have been a, a travel. Uh, this is just awesome, the step back, creating the space. What I watched there is his feet. They were squared up on the hop step back. Look at those feet pointing right at the, the rim. He's got that little tiny... There's a little piece in that jumper that gives him that little extra space, and it's hard for you to block it. Here he is, popping free from behind the arc, and then lost the handle on it. Diving on the floor is Bishop, and he tips it ahead to Alexander. Alexander running to the other side to tie the game up at 34. Now my, my college coach always said low man wins, whether that's you defending low or you're getting to the floor first. 
And you get to the floor first, and, and what happens? Teammate comes over the ball, easy bucket. It was one play like that in the second half in Newark that sparked Creighton in their win against Seton Hall on the road, diving on the floor and making a play. See if it sparks him here as McKnight inside, and Bishop with the rejection. That's a tough play for Quincy McKnight. You're driving right into Gill, so you know Bishop's going to be somewhere close. That's great timing by Bishop helping a teammate out. But Gill, I would say Quincy McKnight, he's got to go the other way. And then Powell off the inbound got a good look on the baseline. Jay's looking for the lead again with Jefferson in the open floor. And they really push the heck out of it. They get deep and then they probe. And if they don't have anything, they throw it to an open guy. A little reminiscent of what Tom Izzo's done at Michigan State all these years. Run down the floor in the first 10 seconds to try to create a break almost. Alexander, tough catch for Zegarowski. Now he'll shoot, and he hits! Alexander got away with a travel on that wing when he stepped back and picked the ball up. Zagorowski continuing to carry this team. Four threes for Zagorowski. He's got 18 in the ballgame. Mamu Kelashvili leaning in. And the rebound taken away by Damian Jefferson. Anticipated some contact. Defense got out of the way. Forced him into an off-balance shot. Alexander steps back for the three. Look at that. Jersey, blue jerseys around, boxing out. Good tip by Kale that got it to McKnight to start it up the floor. I mean, Tyson Alexander's not even looking at the ball. He's watching the numbers on Miles Powell's jersey, and that's all he's worried about. McKnight, a little bobble. Zegarowski with the takeaway. Creighton trying to run. Jefferson, his bobble costs him the break. Ballock off the fake. The lob for Bishop and Mamu Kalashvili got over there to break up the toss, but picks up the foul. Hey, take a look, Marcus Zagorowski. This is just, again, as we let it run. Guys spacing out, good catch. Pretty good defense, too. But when a guy's got it going, that hand in the face is not going to get it done defensively. You got to run him off that line. Bishop one for three at the line today. One more for Christian Bishop as Miles Kale sits down. Jared Roden back on the floor for the Pirates. And Creighton has done a good job diving on the floor, getting some of those extra opportunities, but. You know, those things work when you can turn it into two and three and four baskets in a row. Seton Hall has done a good job of not allowing that to happen and not letting this crowd really run away with it, if you will. Well, yeah, the pace has controlled the game on the floor, but it's controlled the crowd around the floor. They have really been taken out of this game by this pace. Now on the baseline, Roden got a just a glimpse, and he got to the rim. Two-point lead for the Blue Jays. Ballock in the corner, finds Jefferson open for three. And Gill with a good box out of Bishop. And Tyshawn Alexander can't believe it. He picks up his first personal foul. And that'll take us to our first media timeout of the second half. Tyshawn Alexander and Miles Powell. This is a matchup you're not going to want to miss. Big East Tournament coming up March 11th through 14th. All the games on Fox FS1 and, of course, on the Fox Sports app. The Big East Tournament presented by Jeep. And the bracket, as you see, 8, 9, and 10 are set. Everything else is kind of in flux right now. Villanova, Creighton, Seton Hall, a lot will still be determined in games coming up a little bit later on. And for the Blue Jays, as of now, the number three seed, if they win this game, they become the one seed for the first time in their tenure in the Big East since they joined in 2014. And, you know, with all due respect to those teams that are at the bottom, you can't even say in this conference, hey, you'd rather play Team X or Team Y. You just, you, you, you know, because every team, I think, they, they, they give you different issues. You know, St. John's is a team that's playing 
the disruptor. They just want to get in your way and gum it up, and, and they can beat you. They can surprise you. And Xavier, too, they're, they're playing, you know, for something. So, I don't, I, you know, you, you got to get in there and play basketball. You can't say, oh, we hope we play so-and-so. None of them are a gift. All I know is just to be a great tournament. In a fantastic setting as Gill walked with it. He saw the opening, Donnie, and he got a little excited. Took that extra step. And a turnover, the eighth for Seton Hall in the ballgame. Only two turnovers for the Blue Jays today. And some bigs that size, they catch it. Their momentum will continue to take them that way and don't have that ability to stop. I think he's one of them that can stop, kind of decide, but he was just, he was indecisive. Ballock throws it away. Third turnover for the Blue Jays. Can't McKay have it. With the steal. Just can't have it that far away in a close game. McKnight on the drive. Lost it out of his hands. Tipped out by the Jays. It'll stay with Seton Hall. Especially with Quincy McKnight on that other side. He's always aware, always looking. Almost playing center field, if you will. Here's McKnight. Zagorowski a little late to get out there, and McKnight... Hits the three, his second, he's got 10. Seton Hall back up by one. A seesaw affair in Omaha with a Big East championship in the regular season on the line. Now the hard thing about playing against Seton Hall is you can't forget about the other guys who can hurt you, whereas Creighton, you know you got to find those three guys on the perimeter. For Seton Hall, if you fall asleep and you're only playing Powell, McKnight will hurt you. Roden will hurt you, it's, but it's a, it's a tough, really a tough task. First points this year for Ballock against Seton Hall. That's, uh, that's amazing. It really is. As anybody who watches Big East basketball knows, he is a prolific scorer. How about that big to big hoop? Mamu to Gill for the slam. Shows you how special Mamu really is. Puts it on the floor, body control. Ballock looking for two straight, finding two straight. Starting to heat up from deep. And he's heating up this crowd. He's feeling good. Mom and dad are here. His aunt they gave me a little lesson in how to pronounce their name this morning. <laughs> that was the big mid-season controversy. <laughs> Balak. I said, dude, you wait two and a half years to tell people they're saying your name wrong? I will tell us really seven to shoot. In the lane, the little bump left it short, and Jefferson the rebound, and now a tangle underneath. Gill and Jones still tangled after that. Yeah, and some words. I don't think you call anything. I, I think Jones was trying to. They're going to look at it. Gill was trying to pull his arm out. And Jones is... He wasn't letting go. No. <laughs> Take a look. I, mean, I saw this live. If you look right there. Hmm. You know, one guy's going one way, the other guy's going the other way. I, I think you got to play on and they will look at this. As of now, nothing has been called. They basically just separated the two camps, and now they'll go to the monitor. Now you could look at this and go hook and hold in a situation like this. That was all the rage last year. Take a look, bottom of your screen. See, I, I think Gill is just standing there trying to get out, and I think Jones is falling the other way. Obviously, the crowd, see, and to me, the hook and hold started with Jones underneath. I mean, if, if you have to look at it as who's to blame, but I think you just say, listen, let's clean it up, let's play on. Game's too good right now. They're going to call in the third member of the crew for a consult on this video. As of now, 44-41, Jones and Gill, it was going to be Creighton basketball. They were started up the floor when play stopped on this tangle between the two bigs. And I think Jones started to hook, and then it looks like he thought twice about it, and then was just, they were going in different directions. And you can see the, the left arm of Jones goes up first to hook Gill, and then almost like he didn't want, he knew exactly that it was going to be some sort of violation or call. The 
This is a big review in this game, depending on what happens here. Tight ball game. Intense atmosphere in Omaha. And a lot on the line as these two teams play for a Big East championship. Every possession is so, so Giant. important. And now we'll get the official word. So it was the hook and hold they were looking for, Donnie? Yeah, I think that's the right call. Take a look, Jones, underneath the left arm right there, and then he wants to get out of it. Gill also, because of, I think, the angle that he came in at, I think that's the problem. You don't see a lot of hook and holds over the top. They're usually under the arm and pulling back. If you had to make a call, Coons, I'm sorry, I think that is, that, that's the right call. So the flagrant one means two free throws plus the ball for Seton Hall. So this is a big turn in this game. Creighton had a three-point lead and had the ball going the other yeah. way. Now Seton Hall with one more free throw from Romaro Gill, and then the basketball belongs to the Pirates. It almost made it worse that Jones fell to the ground. I think if both players stayed upright, I don't think they would have called anything. I think you just run down and you play. That's unfortunate. I still do not think that Jones meant. I don't think he wanted to finish the hook hold. I think he realized midway that, ah, and then he falls and tried to get the call for himself. Now the inbound to Miles Powell for Seton Hall. Down a pair in Omaha. And an offensive foul against the Pirates going the other way. On Romaro Gill. I will say this as a player, you have to understand when there's been a review and the crowd doesn't like it, the officials are going to pay close attention to those next two or three plays. You almost have to be perfect in setting your screens, your hands. Yeah, you're under the microscope at That's, that point. It's a natural reaction for the officials to make sure that the next plays that happen are going to be cleaner. That's the third on Gill. He stays on the floor. Zegarowski lost it on the way up, got it back, and then tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with the Jays, 16 on the shot clock. And Zagorowski turns the corner. Jones was open for a split second, but because of the hands on the ball and the size of Seton Hall on the floor right now, he just couldn't get that pass through. Kelvin Jones will sit down as Christian Bishop returns. Ballock needs some help. Bishop against Gill. He's one got on one. He's got to understand there's some foul trouble. Got to attack. Here's Alexander, seven to shoot. Mahoney with the open three. And McKnight will start it up the floor for the Pirates, but he'll start it slowly as they've done all day long. Controlling the pace to control this game and limit this crowd's impact. Roden launching and the rebound to Bishop. I think Quincy McKnight has to see that screen and stop behind the screen. He's going to have a wide open shot instead of continuing to dribble one or two more times. Mahoney left alone. This time he hits. Second three for Denzel Mahoney. He has eight. Mama Kalashvili over helping. Couldn't get out there fast enough. But Zagorowski again, making the right plays when he has to score. He does that. When he has to find a teammate, he's been willing to do that as well. Reynolds will turn the corner. The lob to Gills tipped away. Mamu Kalashvili able to save it for Seton Hall, and then a foul is called. Reynolds has to shoot that ball. You got to lay up your three feet away. I know what you're trying to do, throw the alley oop, but you can't. You got to be aggressive. Zagorowski. Mahoney from the corner, three ball, corner pocket. Big East Championship on the line. Don't go away. Woo! Today, the groundbreaking inaugural season of XFL football continues as the New York Guardians face off with the Dallas Renegades at 5 Eastern on Fox and streaming on the Fox Sports app.
Donnie Marshall and I, Kevin Kugler, back in Omaha, 47-42, Creighton with a five-point advantage, 11:37 remaining in the second half. The Blue Jays tournament resume, very sound. Our Mike DeCourcy has them as a four seed right now, 23 and seven record. The net ranking of 12, the strength of schedule at 31, and a chance today in 11 minutes and 37 seconds to be the number one seed in the Big East tournament next week if they can win this game. Seton Hall can say the same thing. If they win this game, they're the number one yeah. seed, and they're the outright champions of the Big East. This is an important time of the game for Seton Hall. You don't want this thing to get to seven, obviously, so you need a quality bucket here. It doesn't have to be a three. Got to get something good. But McKnight got a wide open look for three. Well, that's what veteran teams do. So yeah, this, you know, these guys who play a lot of minutes for Kevin Willard don't have a lot of paint left on them. You know, he's got some, <laughs> these guys have been around. They've seen it all. The pressures of everything. Tough shot. Forced that one up to Denzel Mahoney, and it's going the other way to Seton Hall. Pirates can tie with a two, take the lead again with a three, 11 minutes to go. McKnight. Mamu Kelashvili matched up against Zegarowski. Top step into the paint to Gill, and he stepped on the baseline, and a turnover back to Creighton. Reynolds, and now Mamu Kelashvili. You've got to shoot the basketball. You're putting your big guy in a tough, tough spot. This is just a good cut through. You got again, you're gonna play him. He's gonna make the right decision. His teammates, especially Quincy McKnight, stepping up, knocking down those open jumpers. Down the baseline, Zegarowski trying to hit a cutting Alexander, but the big paw of Romaro Gill got in the way to block it away. Here comes Powell, turning the corner, stripped on the way in, but Gill there to clean it up and tie the game at 47. I will say one of the more impressive things about Miles Powell over his career is he's he's learned that winning is the most important thing. Or a lot of players just want to score, 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 and they think, hey, if we lose whatever, I got mine. He's just not that kid. He wants to win. Alexander fouled on the way up. That's two shots coming. And the fourth foul on Romaro Gill. And that means Powell will do what it takes to put his teammates in a good position to be able to score and help his team win. I mean, I never thought coming into this game it was just about him. I'm sure Greg McDermott didn't either. He knows there's some other guys on this Seton Hall team that can hurt you. Gill on the bench with those four fouls. Alexander off the inbound, the three. Karam's wildly off. And McKnight starts it up. 13 points, one assist, only one turnover for the main ball handler, Quincy McKnight. He's got to get into that position a little quicker. Zagorowski gives him a little bit of room, but if you hesitate, you don't have a wide open shot anymore. Powell to work. Jumps it to McKnight in the corner. Zagorowski on the run out. And McKnight inside. Mamu Kelashvili pinned by Bishop. One on the shot clock. It never hit the rim. And I think they're going to take a look at this to make sure I, that it did. I thought it yeah, hit I the rim. It did as well. They're going to look at this one to make sure. Kevin Willard certainly did. Yeah, yeah right there. No question. But great defense by Bishop, though. There was an easy layup for Mamu. Bishop's activity saving a bucket. You'll see the rim hit here, right there. A little clang. This will be Seton Hall ball with 20 to shoot. You see the coach in the background there, Terrence Rincher, join the team later in the season. One of my counterparts played against him in college. He was at Texas. Great pickup for Creighton and his staff. He's been a nice addition to a real good staff. Paul Lusk there, you yeah, see on the great right side of your screen. He's done a tremendous job helping out this team, especially from a defensive standpoint over the course of this year. Well, not only that, once it gets to recruiting, I mean, he's a New York guy. The New York Riverside Church. I had a chance to play against him in high school. We, back in the 1900s, we were talking about when we played against one another. So long ago, but played in the NBA. I mean, Terrence Winters is just a stand-up guy. Great for this. Guys, would you get done? Bench. Go churn butter, I believe, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get your chores done. Yeah. 
Great time. Oh, great time, yes. Miles Powell. Back to work. Mamo Kalashvili. And Roden with the open look and the three. Jared Roden with a big shot. And the Pirates up three, 50 to 47. Just great offense again out of a timeout or a review, if you will. The ball movement and just a step slow, Creighton, trying to find that guy. You got to know where Roden is. He's a catch and shoot guy. Run him off that line. Bishop between two defenders with the bucket and the foul. Quincy McKnight thought he got enough ball and arm, I guess, for that not to go down. But Bishop doing a terrific job recognizing the mismatch, stepping through. Oh, no ball at all. All arm. Roden got called for the foul. His first. Quincy McKnight got a lot of body as well as Bishop completes the three point play. Yeah. So another tie. That's the seventh tie. There have been 15 lead changes in this game. We have 9:04 to go in Omaha, and we're no closer to determining who's going to be the Big East regular season champion than we were when we started. Oh, I love it. And, and the threats now become a little bit more serious. Creighton at home. They've got multiple guys who can really. Hurt you, but I don't think we've heard the last of number 13 in blue. Only nine points. First half was marred by foul trouble. Now going to work. Looking to step back. Here's Mamu Kelashvili underneath. Roden camping out. Missed everything. And Zagorowski will start it up for Creighton. Zagorowski end to end with the scoop and the finish. Wow. A little dance on him. Moved the ball all over the place. He is a special, special kid. Really coming to his own this season. 16 points per game. He has 20 to pace the Jays to the two-point lead. Powell looking for the lead. Three a little short. Segarowski the rebound. Looking to run. Ballock attacking all the way in. Back-to-back -back layups and a four-point Creighton lead. And the crowd alive in Omaha. Big East basketball is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Back in Omaha where Creighton has a four-point lead a moment ago inside the Creighton Huddle. If they want to live with setting that screen on pile, then you just got to stay on your feet. Do what you just did right there. Okay? You don't want it. You don't want it. Player-led huddles are always, to me, a sign of a really good and tight-knit team. And you saw that with Ballack there leading the way before Coach McDermott came in and talked about this seal just a moment ago. And even Mitch Ballack. Did I say that right? Ballock. Gosh, I can't believe it. But he, but even he says big time because take a look. There's going to be a seal. Watch Mahoney right there seals off and allows Ballock to get there. Is that it? Is that right? Ballock. 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 It's more comfortable. It's like Ballock. ballet. It's like ballet, but there's an ock at the end. I'm telling you, I went over and razzed him when he was, he was visiting with his parents today. I'm like, dude, you can't wait two and a half years to tell us. You're saying it wrong, man. I mean, you know what? Call me Marshall if that's what we're doing. Donna Marshall. Saying it wrong, both names. Powell turning the corner. You can say Miles Powell. Usually it ends in <laughs> two or three points, and he brings Seton Hall within a pair. That's a big time answer right there. Hmm. And he loves to get to that right hand. It's just he's so strong. You got to respect what he does on that perimeter. So you overplay a little bit, he puts it on the floor. Jefferson looking to attack against Mamu Kelashvili. Big boy. Oh, boy. That's his strength. That's a big boy move right there. Body, absorb it, and finish. He had a big game in Newark. 18 points in the win for Creighton earlier in the year. Four-point lead for Creighton with seven minutes to play in Omaha. Miles Powell. Oh, Alexander got a piece, able to dump it to Roden. Roden with the fake and the finish. Talk about a kid that's developed. Loves to catch and shoot. 
great body control, has great length, athleticism. He's been a difference maker today, Donnie. 12 points, five rebounds in 20 minutes. Big time move right there. Zagorowski with an open look. <laughs> five for five from behind the arc. For Marcus Zagorowski, he has 23. That's just too much space. Quincy McKnight can't give him that much room. You got to know by now, six minutes to play. Zagorowski is feeling it. McKnight will try to answer. And the rebound by Tyshawn Alexander. Jays by five. Jays by seven. Their largest lead of the ball game. And now that walking it up the floor for Seton Hall is going to have to be a little bit quicker. And they're going to talk about it. Creighton's hit their last six field goals from the floor. Zagorowski's hit all five from deep. Oh, that's such a good screen by Mahoney, just doing all the little things. Zagorowski, the space, the knockdown. Look at the smile. Things are going great here in Omaha. Fox College Hoops is sponsored by Allstate, reminding you that basketball season is mayhem. Getting a little mayhem in Omaha today. A 61-54 lead for the Creighton Blue Jays looking for their first Big East title. 50% from the floor. 10 of 21, their let it fly mantra. 10 more threes. Marcus Zagorowski leading the way with 23 points and five of five from three. And let's take a look at the SoFi Money Moves. Get your money right all in one app. The one guy who's done it right all game long and been so comfortable whether passing or scoring, the youngster out of Hamilton, Mass. He's never probably been there, I'm sure. It's, it's kind of out there, a little north of Boston, Manchester by the sea, Gloucester's out. I'm a New England guy. You are a New wherever, England guy. Wherever you need to go, especially up there. Spent some time on Cape Ann once. Does that count? Uh, all right. Not yeah. really. No? All right. No. <laughs> Miles Powell off the inbound to Quincy McKnight. What do you expect from Seton Hall offensively? That? from Powell. Oh my goodness, what a three from Miles Powell. He's a silencer. <laughs> Just what he does. Even Greg McDermott's got a smile on his face on the Creighton sideline. What are you going to do? Yeah, like One it. of the best players in the history of the Big East. Just hit another clutch shot. But I would call that a quick hitter. And Seton Hall's going to have to figure out how to get more of those quick hitters. Alexander got an open look on the drive from Zagorowski and Gill back on the floor with four fouls grabs the rebound. And Gill's got to keep that ball high. I mean, you can't bring it down to your waist and now the little guys can dig in there or you hit him with an elbow, that ball staying there. Your day's done. Alexander with a hands, diving for it. On the floor, Denzel Mahoney, a whistle and a foul. That's another deflection. Tyshawn Alexander will not get a steal for that. Nothing's going to be in the box score about this play, but one of the biggest games, I believe, one of the biggest plays of the game. That deflection and then Mahoney to the floor. And the foul on Shavar Reynolds afterwards. Alexander's offensive stat line not going to be his best. He's one of seven from three today. But his defensive presence has been the biggest impact he's made on this game. Yeah. I mean, Jefferson to Bala. Seton Hall's got to do a better job of showing up for Powell when that jump comes, the double team. Here's Mahoney to three. Open and good. And Denzel Mahoney stretches the lead to seven. Now Seton Hall is going to have to do something they have not done the entire game. That's play fast. As we get close to the four minute mark, Creighton only three fouls in the second half. They have fouls to give if needed. Seton Hall has committed five. Powell against Alexander, 10 to shoot. Miles Powell going to work. Reynolds steps in for the two. And the tip off the miss by Quincy McKnight. That is, uh, first of all, that is fantastic defense by Tashawn Alexander without fouling. And once you make Miles Powell give the ball up, you've done your job. Miles Powell's working really, really hard. He's going to have to find some seams. And maybe those set plays aren't the best thing for Seton Hall down the stretch. They're going to have to play faster. 6 of 12 from the floor is Powell Alexander around the screen. Tyshawn Alexander with the three as he stalks away confidently in an eight-point ball game. That is 
I, I know we got a lot of time left, but that takes the air completely out of you defensively when the defensive stopper of the game, who we know can score, is knocking down a three. And an offensive foul on Quincy McKnight. Turnover to the Blue Jays. Creighton 67, Seton Hall 59. Big East title on the line in Omaha, Nebraska. Live XFL action coming up next. Head coaches Bob Stoops, Dallas on the left. Kevin Gilbride in New York on the right. Chatting it up. That's on deck. But first, let's get back out to Omaha where we are closing in on learning who our Big East champ will be. And as of right now, Rob Stone, the Creighton Blue Jays with the upper hand, 67-59. 3-21 remaining in the second half. The stakes, a regular season championship, their first since joining the Big East, their first since the 2013 Missouri Valley Conference regular season. And they will also win the top seed of the Big East tournament if they can hang on. You look back to 2013, look at Greg McDermott. He never ages. Doug McDermott really helped him stay young. His son poured in 41 points in the regular season finale win against one of their big rivals, Wichita State. 91-79 was the final for the Missouri Valley Conference champs in this building that day. Now Greg McDermott trying to coax his team over the finish line in the Big East. Never easy to transition league to league, but this Creighton team jumped right into the Big East, helped have Doug McDermott on their side. But they were an impact team right away in this conference, and now just a few years later, a chance for a crown. Best player in the country. It surprises me that they don't already have a Big East regular season championship as hard as it is to play in this building. Let me just tell you, I know people talk about the NCAA tournament, but to have a banner up that says Big East champions because it's a complete body of work over a long season, huge. It's huge. First double-digit lead for either team today. 2.55 to go. How big was that Alexander three a moment ago as Powell leans in? No, Mamu Kelashvili's tick won't go, and Powell's fouled on another opportunity for Seton Hall. That'll go on Denzel Mahoney. And yeah, there are games where you will see some of the better players have poor games, struggling, shooting the ball, and you think, okay, you're just not feeling it today. You know, as much as, you know, Miles Powell has struggled, the defense is the reason. Yeah, he's six of thirteen. It's not. A, he just he hasn't gotten the opportunities. You know those those 20, 25 field goal attempt games are not going to happen against Creighton. He's nine of twenty nine this year against the Jays. That's Tyshawn Alexander's defense. Marcus Howard was ten of thirty in two games against Creighton. Again, matched up with Tyshawn Alexander. He's become the Jays' defensive stopper. And he stopped, or at least limited, Miles Powell today. Now, Fowles hurt him in the first half for sure. Breaking a little Seton Hall pressure now. And remember, Tyshawn Alexander, at least last year, was a scorer, a big time scorer. So to kind of make that transition to not abandon your scoring and become such a great defensive player it says a lot about him. Jay's not missing right now. They've hit their last four. They are 15 of 24, 62% in the second half. McKnight working. No, Mahoney the rebound. 2.12 to go. These fans in Omaha are starting to taste a title. They talked about how Seton Hall can play different ways. I think Brayton is showing us today that they can play slow. <laughs> they can obviously we know they like to play fast. They average just about 80 points a game. I never thought they'd get close to that. After this game being tied at 32 at halftime, we'll look up and... Oh, my! Tyshawn Alexander! Is that the knockout blow? I think Tyshawn Alexander has two of the knockout blows. I'll give him a third one with the defensive stop earlier. One thirty-seven remaining in the second half. Creighton that close to their first Big East Conference championship. Kevin Kugler alongside Donnie Marshall. You see the standings. If the Jays win, it's a three-way tie 
for a Big East championship, but Creighton has the number one seed when you pick through all the tiebreakers in next week's Big East tournament. And Donnie Marshall, the reason they're in the position they are right now is because of this man, Tyshawn Alexander. Well, it started with his defense, and let me tell you, it, it's hard to, to guard a guy like Miles Powell every single time down the floor. Didn't get a ton of help with that. And then to have the conditioning and the the courage to help your team on the offensive end. Can't say enough about that kid right there. I mean, just uh, focused, dialed in, understanding scouting reports. Stepped up big today. Greg McDermott's team does not lack for confidence. There is a certain swagger with this team. They got to be careful. Sometimes the talking, there was a lot of jawing at the end of that as the timeout was called, Seton Hall's final timeout. When you're picked seventh, in a preseason <laughs> poll out of 10 teams, you'll have a chip on your shoulder. Mamu Kelashvili has it picked away. Jays get it back on the turnover. Up 14 in Omaha. And a technical foul. Jefferson and Mamu Kelashvili really going at it. Well, here's the thing. You got to finish the sportsmanship. I don't like that Jefferson's waving at him. You got to finish like a champ. Game's over. There's no reason for you to rub it in. Sometimes you got to be the bigger and walk away. Zagorowski being looked at by the athletic training staff as he rubs his right leg. Jefferson wants the crowd on his side. He didn't have to ask too much. But not the way you want to end this game for either team. You know, and here's the other thing that this may not be the last time these <laughs> exactly they could play next week right here and it was really initiated by Mamo Kalashvili but you got to remember they may play again so what that means is you don't want Seton Hall to have any fuel for the next time you play they're reviewing this play now Obviously, a lot of talking. A technical foul was called. But they're going to look at this to see at the very end, there was the swatting of hands. Watch the very end of this exchange. Well, uh, you know, Mel McKellis really can't run over, and Jefferson's just clapping. Look, I've been in both of those situations as a player, and I, I know your emotions get the best of you. I've been on both sides. Coogs. I've been the instigator, and I've been the guy that's saying, okay, you, you have been the instigator? A few times in my career, only a couple Maybe times. once. But I, I, I've been around enough to know that you don't want that play to take away from the special, you know, what's happening in this building right now. You don't want that to overshadow what you've worked so hard for in this game. And the word from our officiating crew. I mean, that's going to be basically a double tech essentially for everyone at home. Offsetting technical Offsetting, fouls. Yeah. Kalashvili, Jefferson each with the foul. Second on Jefferson, third I on say, Kalashvili. It's hard to walk away when a guy's walking at you, though. I, I got to admit for Jefferson, but this is, you know, that's the play they did not call a foul on. And, and he was upset going up the floor after that. And listen, you, you don't. You're losing. You don't get the foul call. It, it's emotional. It's sure. So and I get it. Now that's a concern if you're a Jays fan. Marcus Segarowski over having that right leg looked at on the bench right now. That'll dampen the mood a little bit if Zegarowski's injured at the end of this game. Not a lot of rest after four Big East turn oh. starts either. Alexander flips it back out. Three to shoot. Mahoney with the three. And that'll finish it off. The Creighton Blue Jays are under a minute away from their first Big East championship in school history. And I know this is going to be somewhere around that 15, 17 points. This game was much closer than that. And a takeaway. Sharif Mitchell off the bench. Mitchell. 
And a carry. That ball got out of his hands a little bit. The freshman in his excitement. Yeah, yeah. He's, come on. And on senior day, <laughs> the seniors back on the floor, Kelvin Jones. And for the first time today, Jordan Scurry, the 6'2 senior from Dedham, Massachusetts. And I don't know that anybody in this building expected to clear the bench at the end of a game against Seton Hall. And that's what the Jays are doing as Jet Canfield, the 5'10 freshman, comes in for Damian Jefferson. I mean, it really was a, I would say all but the last five, six minutes. It was a pretty darn good game. There's something to be said. Listen, it, this team is, they're, they're 17 and one in this building on the season. It's pretty darn good, Coos. They've held a terrific Seton Hall team to 60 Woo. points in this game. Oh. Tough place to play. Anthony Nelson's three won't go. And we are good battling underneath against Kelvin Jones. And Creighton can dribble this out. And a timeout is used to substitute for Coach McDermott. They're going to put Christian Bishop back on the floor. So that I believe Denzel Mahoney can sub out. They're going to Go back to the bench again. Nick Zile reaching for the warm-up pants to take him off. And Kelvin Jones is going to leave. Greg McDermott wanted his senior to get a big ovation. <laughs> senior didn't want to leave. Here comes Nick Zile. And here comes Jordan Scurry, the senior. We'll get his ovation on senior day. Creighton going to dribble it out. And Donnie Marshall, a championship clinching 13-1 run down the stretch for the Blue Jays. I know you're sharing that title, but I don't care. When people walk in this building, they're going to see that banner that says Big East Champions. And for the first time in the history of Creighton, they are a Big East champion. 77 to 60. Great champions of the Big East and the top seed in next week's Big East tournament. Great job by the supervisors in this building. Crowd runs into the floor. They immediately have an area roped off where the players are so no one gets hurt. But this is what college basketball is all about right there. How important this basketball team is to this school, to this city, to this state. And the Big East has a first time at least partial champion because we end up with three teams atop the Big East standings. The Creighton Blue Jays end up atop in the Big East tournament. The number one seed will be Creighton. Villanova and Seton Hall follow in those Big East standings. All share the Big East crown, but the Blue Jays hold the number one spot in next week's Big East tournament. Seventy-seven to sixty, the final. The Blue Jays win it over the Pirates of Seton Hall. All smiles for Greg McDermott and the Creighton Blue Jays. 17-point win over the Seton Hall Pirates to our Los Angeles studios in just a moment as the Blue Jays celebrate their first Big East crowd.